connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. Um, for so winning. This word, bread of life, that I receive today is not only for me, but to be shared with others that they may grow in Christ as well as myself for the purpose of successful living. Psalm 34 verse 1 through 3 reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Father, we just pray and we thank you once again that you've allowed a group of your believers to come to your house of prayer, praise, and Thanksgiving once again. We're grateful for the opportunity to come and pull ourselves up to the seat of your table. And we pray God feed us till we want no more. We pray for a fresh revelation of you that when we leave this place, we are changed and transformed by the renewing of our minds. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. I want to dive into the topic uh, today from Psalm 34, I want to dive into a topic, I owe him. I owe him. M many people uh, are going to be somewhere this coming week and celebrating Thanksgiving and enjoying themselves with family and friends. And this is that opportunity that we get to do that. And I'm grateful to God for that. Um, and and we'll, we'll bow our heads before we eat yes. to give our grace. Yes. And, and that's, a, that's the norm for believers in Christ. Yes. Um, but I remember when I was a kid growing up, and I, uh, at Christmas, my mother and father purchased these pink 10-speed bicycles for me and my sisters. And I remember telling God, thank you. I wanted that bike so bad. I remember when I graduated from college after having a elongated challenge in college coming from the side of the track that I came from, a side that they told me that from these parts, we don't go to college, they don't go to college, and they are not successful. So I graduated from college, and I said, thank you, God, I graduated. You know, thank you, Jesus. And I remember my father taking me to the car dealer and helping me purchase my first car that I was buying. And though I was nervous to sign the line for my car, I thank God when I drove off the parking lot, I got my own car. And I do remember after graduating from college, I purchased, I, I got my first job. You know, and I went home and told my parents I got my own office and my mom and dad looked at each other and said, she ain't got an office. She's exaggerating this story. I had a table and a chair, and that's all they gave me by a window. Amen. But I said, if you're in the building, it's your office then. Amen. But I did thank God for the new job. Yes. And, and I can recollect when I got my first paycheck with my name on it. Yes. I was so grateful to be working and growing up and developing and becoming independent. And all of that. I say to you that it's easy to thank God and praise God when you have money in the bank and things are going your way and you got material blessings and your children are doing well and it's kind of quiet on the home front. It doesn't take faith to thank him then. But the text we read, David, David was in a situation 
that he was running for his life from King Saul. Saul had become so jealous of David after David killed the Goliath, the Philistine. Saul became so jealous of him that he began to be jealous that he wanted to pursue and kill David. And David was on the run from one cave to the next cave and he found himself in Philistine territory facing the enemy. And what he did was he acted though as he was insane and then he wrote this text. He was in trouble and he wrote this text when he said, I will bless the Lord <laughs> at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. I just want to focus on verse 1, yes. if we can just focus there. David is teaching us that <clears throat> it takes faith to praise God and thank him when you got situations that you're having to contend with. Amen. And many people this week would sit down at the Thanksgiving table and they will say their grace, but they're going to be contending with something. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take faith to wake up and to tell God, thank you yes. for your goodness and for your grace. Yes. Uh, this text, let's just break it down. It says, I will bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. The one point I want you to see here is that I will bless the Lord. Which means that praising God and blessing God is your responsibility. Amen. And it is a personal decision to praise him when you're hurting. Yes. And to praise him when you're contending with something. Yes. And the first point is that we must understand that praise and thanksgiving is a personal choice. It, it has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with your circumstance. David was hiding and he was going through, but he still had the ability to say, I will bless the Lord. Amen. And the beauty of this is that everything was not <clears throat> going well. <clears throat> but he still said, I'm going to bless you. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and he says... <clears throat> that is teaching us, it's really on me mm -hmm. to bless God. <clears throat> it's not on anybody else. It's really all on me. Amen. <clears throat> I get to decide when I wake up every morning <clears throat> if I'm going to bless God. Yeah. Because our blessings, God, is not, not tied to our situation. So, the word here. <clears throat> bless means, in the original Hebrew, it means to bow and kneel before God. <clears throat> it also means to praise and to lift him high. Above everything that you're dealing with, the word there, bless means that I'm going to lift God up even when I'm hurting. Yes. Yeah. Even if I'm contending with something, even if I'm sick, even if my money is short, David is teaching us, I'm going to bless him. Yes. I'm going to lift him up. Yes. And I'm going to give him praise and adoration in spite of what I'm dealing with. Amen. That it's a personal decision yes. to bless the Lord. Amen. Number two. That praise and thanksgiving is not seasonal. Mm -hmm. Christmas comes once a year. Thanksgiving comes once a year, year. Your birthday comes once a year. But David is teaching us praise and thanksgiving is not seasonal. Mm -hmm. That David is teaching us that I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Which means that. No matter what time it is in your life, it's still a good time to give God praise. Yeah, yeah, amen. No, no matter what season you're in of your life, it's still a good time to give God praise. Amen. 
that the season and the timing and what you're going through does not dictate your praise and thanksgiving. Amen. And that what your emotions may be feeling at that point in time, even your emotions are not to dictate your praise and your thanksgiving. Amen. Okay? If, if you are a golfer, and we would go out on the golf course, you hit a ball and you hit it really well, then you thought you were a pretty good golfer. If you hit it bad, you thought you were a bad golfer. And the thing about golf is there are some highs and lows on the golf course. And there are some highs and lows in life. And if you only praise God when things are going well, if you only praise God when you're on the mountaintop, if you only praise God when you got all the money in the bank you need, if you only praise God when you're feeling really good that day, if you only praise God when the sun shine outside, I come to tell you that God wants us to grow up and mature to a place that we are not dictated, we're not dictating our praise based on our circumstance. And many of you all are having praise and worship only when things are going well. God is still a good God even if you're having rainy days in your life. Yes. And that the rainy days are not contingent upon you praising God. You have to praise God and make up your mind in a decision that God is still good. Yes. Regardless of what I'm having to contend with. Regardless of the news that I just got from my text message or whoever called me. At the end of the day, praise and thanksgiving is not seasonal. Because he says, I will bless the Lord at all times and so here's the point uh, let me do it this way God's goodness is not contingent upon your circumstance God simply is good his character is good the problem is that we tie everything that we have in life and whatever happens in us then we say God is good I got me a new car God is good I got me a new job God is good yeah he is good but when they lay you off he's still good He's still good. When you have bills due, you, he's still good. Uh, we got to get away from the fact tying God on it to when things happen to us that we prayed about and we wanted to happen in our life. If we pray about something, it doesn't happen the way we want it. He's still good. I'm trying to get you to move to a place in your life not to have praise and thanksgiving only when you have food on the table. But I've been hungry and told God you're still a good God. You got to be in a place with God that no matter what's happening in your life, at the end of the day, yes. he is still Jehovah Jireh, yes. my provider. Amen. And so we have to learn to not tie our praise and thanksgiving to what's happening in our life. Yes. Because David was in trouble and he still had the nerves to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Number three. His praise does not belong to me. Okay, don't believe me? Psalm 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Look at that scripture. His praise. Uh-oh. The word says his praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise means that the adoration and lifting him up goes to him. So I owe him a praise. And many of us or what I consider, we have a praise and thanksgiving deficit. Yes. Because if we really truly praise him every day when we got up, yes. and thank him every day when we get up, Amen. no matter what we're contending with, mm -hmm. then we can live the scripture when he says, I will bless him at all times. And his praise, yes. which means that the adoration and what belongs to him, then I give it to him because it's his praise. And so, therefore, it's important that we understand what that means. His praise means this. Give him the fruit of your lips. According to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says, give him the fruit of your lip, which means tell him how great he is yes. and tell him how awesome he is yes. and tell him how wonderful he is and tell him how amazing he is. And tell him, God, you are my keeper. Yes. Tell him that your grace is sufficient. Yes. Tell God how he is just doing everything that you want him to do. But all important that, God, you are a God that sit high and you look low yes. and nothing happens without you allowing it to happen. So if it happened to me yes. and something came in my life, then you are going to be the God that moved me through this situation. Yes. So I'm still going to praise you. Yes. Maybe 
I'm hurting, but I'm still going to praise him. Maybe I'm frustrated, I'm still going to praise him. Maybe I'm discouraged, I'm still going to praise him. Because we have to understand that the praise belongs to God. At the end of the day, it's his praise. That's the key. Belongs to him. So when we understand this, that we must learn to praise God, whether it's raining outside, whether it's raining in our life, whether it's sunshine, whether it's sleet, snow, thundering, no matter the weather, God deserves our praise. And many of us, as I said earlier, are on a praise deficit because we are only praising God when things go the way we want them to go. But what happens when things don't go the way we want them to go? The God that you and I serve still sits high and still looks low and still got you covered under his blood. And that's enough to give him praise. And if you are in a situation today and you don't know how you're going to get through the situation and you don't know how you're going to get out, the best thing to do is understand Psalm 22 and 3. It says he inhabits the praise of his people. The word inhabits there means that he comes and sits down in your presence when you start praising God. And when you start worshiping God, he comes and makes his abode with you. So what happens is if you want his presence, watch if you praise him, his presence will come. It, he inhabits the praise of his people, which means that When I just start lifting my hands and I start praising God, he comes and sits right with me and talks with me and tells me that I'm his own. His presence will come. His peace is going to come. His joy is going to come when you learn to praise God. If you want his presence, praise him. Because the word right there tells you in Psalms 22 and 3. That God would do well within the praises of his people. And so if your house doesn't have his presence, that means you're not praising him. If you start praising God more and stop complaining, I guarantee you the presence of God would come. Let me give you these three things. I'm not fooling with you, didn't cap (laughs) it. I don't want you to have a praise deficit in your life. Many of you all have a praise I owe you. You owe God a praise for the accident that could have happened that did not happen. For the sickness that could have taken you out, but he still got you here. (laughs) For the bankruptcy that didn't take you out. For your kids and what they've taken you through, you're still here. All that you've gone through in life, you're still standing. When people wrote you off, you're still here. Yeah. When people told you that you were amount to nothing, you're still here. Yeah. Yeah. When people tell you that you are from the wrong side of the track, I want you to know that the right side of the track, as long as you got God, you from the right side of the track. Yeah. And this Thanksgiving, we want to learn how to praise God, not tied to stuff yeah. and material blessing, but based on his character. Yeah. And the attributes of God, I don't want a worship deficit. I don't want to owe God anything that I know I should give him. If I do nothing else in life, you may lend me money and I may never be able to pay you back. But the one thing I've decided that I am going to be a person that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm walking down the grocery store. Lord, help me figure out what to buy. Money's short, but God, you can make it work out. God, I'm just glad I'm still able to come to the grocery store. I'm still able to buy some food. I'm still able to walk and talk. I'm clothed in my right mind. Somebody did not wake up this morning, but God, you saw it fit that I am still alive. 
I still have purpose. There's still a reason why I'm here. And God, I'm grateful for the reason that you still have me here. And while I'm here on earth, borrowing your air, because I'm on borrowed time, I am going to still praise you while I'm on borrowed time. I'm on everything I got, God, you have borrowed to me. It's on borrow. It's on loan. You've loaned me my house. I thank you. You loan me my car. I thank you. You loan me my family. I thank you. You loan me my health. I thank you. You loan me my education. I thank you. You loan me the money I got in the bank. I thank you. God, everything I got, I owe it to you. For the earth is the Lord. And everything that's in it all belongs to you. Since it all belongs to God, we might as well give him praise. We might as well tell him thank you. Don't wait till the battle's over to shout. You might as well go ahead and give him a shout in praise right now. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning, late in the midnight hour. He's going to turn around for my good. All I got to do is do one thing. You got one responsibility in life. And that is to tell God, thank you for your goodness. That is to give him praise. That is to lift your hands. That is to clap your hands. That is to stomp your feet. That is to walk around your house every now and then and say, oh God, you are just a great God. Oh God, you are a good God. I thought that was going to take me out, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Do we have anybody this morning that's grateful that God still got you here this morning, that you're still alive? And that's enough to give him praise that's enough to give him glory and honor so let me close this out the first thing I want you to do is I want you call it's called counteract your complaint every time you start complaining I want you to catch yourself you say God I'm sorry but I'm thankful <laughs> you got to counteract it you, you, you got to start counteracting the negative stuff. And, and you go on the job and you, maybe you don't like your job, but you say, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm about to complain for my boss. I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to thank you that I have a job. I'm thankful that I'm walking. I'm thankful that I'm able to talk. You, you got to learn how to counteract the negativity and the complaining. We are prone to complain all the time. But I want you to be like the scripture said, do all things without complaining. Learn how to praise God. So catch yourself this week. When you want to complain about the traffic, you want to complain about the bill, you want to say, you know what? It is what it is, God. I know you're able to help me. I know you're able to bring me through it. Show me how to get through it. Help me to navigate the situation. So that's the first thing, counteract. Number two, give God the fruit of your lips regardless of the situation yes. what do i mean the fruit of your lip that means that you get a bad text message you get a bad phone call something bad is happening <clears throat> i don't care what happens i want you to say god but you're still a good god i, I don't know something happening god something's going on things are not right <clears throat> I, and i want you to just say okay god this is what i'm dealing with I'm not feeling well today. <clears throat> I got some bills I got to pay. Yes. I got a situation I'm dealing with. Okay, you acknowledge it, but then you come back and say, but God, you, you're still good. Yes. <laughs> you're still awesome. Yes. And, I, and the word says, I will bless you at all times. Even in my mess, yes. I'm going to bless him. <clears throat> Even when I'm hurting, I'm going to bless you. Yes. God, if anybody can bless you, I want you to know on this day, I choose to get up and make it personal, my responsibility to be your number one cheerleader, God. I have an audience of one, and the audience that you got to plead is God. So every morning you got up, you got an audience of one that's watching you, and that is your God. That when he wake you up in the morning, you get out of bed and say, God, this is the day you have made. I should rejoice and be glad. Every place that my feet touch today, I'm going to prosper in Jesus' name. And if you start having that kind of mindset and attitude as you're walking throughout the day, say, Lord, you are just a wonderful God. You are just a great God. You are a merciful God. You are a kind and righteous God. You are a God of all wisdom and truth. God, thank you for being so patient with me. I haven't always been right, but God, yet you still love me, even in my sin. God, you are good, and I thank you for your grace 
and your mercy that has saved me. You are my redeemer. You are the God of the universe. You are my Jehovah Jireh. You are the God that provides everything that I need. God, you are Jehovah Nisa. You are the God that fight my battle. I'm not fighting any battles anymore. I'm going to give them to you. God, you are Jehovah Shammah. That means you are the God that's ever present. You got to tell him, God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that restores my soul. You are Jehovah Shalom, God. You are my peace in the midnight hour when I don't have a, a reason to even be up at late at night. But you are my peace. Now, I'm going to go to bed because you're going to give me the peace that surpasses all understanding. You got to tell him that you're my everything. You're my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. Amen. This is the God that you serve. And I want you to be so intentional this holiday season. To bless his name. Yes. Through the highs and through the lows of life. Yes. Make your praise steadfast. Make your praise and thanksgiving consistent. Mm -hmm. Don't make it tied to how you feel. Because you're not always going to feel it. <clears throat> but it's a decision. Yes. Bless his name because his name is greater than any other name. Amen. And as you go throughout the day, as you go throughout the season, Amen. understand when David was in trouble, mm -hmm. he wrote this text. Yes. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's why we owe him praise. Yes. I owe him a debt of praise. Yes. I ask God to forgive me for the times I complain so much. Mm -hmm. God, I owe you nothing but praise and thanksgiving. Yes. And with this mindset and attitude, this is the place that you will invoke the presence of God to come into your situation when you start praising God more and thanking him, he is going to come in and sit with you and sup with you. And he is going to continue to be your keeper. Amen. It's my prayer. God bless you on this morning in Jesus name. Amen and amen. We do hope and pray that something was said or done to bless your heart on the day. Amen and amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Now, I know... Uh